Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another fun-filled afternoon of Chem 170 with your host, me, Dr. White. Sad news, this is our last full class together. Oh, that's sad. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the semester with me. Uh, the only sad part about the semester is I didn't get to meet all of you. Uh, when we're face to face, I'm able to meet you and get to know you better. But on Zoom, well, anyways, that's Zoom, but at least you're still able to learn organic chemistry. All right, let me give you some important information. One, on Uh, I'll have to check, Megan. Uh, I'll look at it and I'll give you extra time. Okay? Shh, don't tell anybody about that. Shh. But I'll check. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, on Monday will be the final for Chem 170. At about 12.55, I will send out an email with the password for the PDF password protected PDF file, which I will post sometime Sunday, this coming Sunday on G2L. And you will have until next morning, I think 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. <clears throat> to take the test and upload your answers as a single PDF file, just like you've been doing all semester. Uh, I guarantee by Saturday, uh, Next Saturday, I, a week from this Saturday, I will have your scores and your final grade in D2L. I'll send out an email to that effect. What I won't do, because I don't do it when we're face to face either, I won't send you an email with your individual point total or points for each question. But because you won't have a chance to look at it, if you're within 10 degree, 10 degree, 10 points of a cutoff, I go back and regrade the final, make sure I didn't make any mistakes, which I really haven't made any this semester, but you never know. Because last time I checked, I don't walk on water unless it's frozen, and even then I stay off it. And that will be Monday. Now, see, uh, ECC has a weird thing. We don't have a finals week. So because of the contract, even when we're face to face, if I give the final like I am on Monday, I'm still required to have class on Wednesday, a week from today. Guess what? You don't have to show up. And if nobody shows up after the first 15 minutes, I'm gonna just say bye. And I won't post that as a video either because you don't need to see it. It's, there's nothing that's really gonna happen. So in a week from today, you do not have to come to class. You want to stop by and say hello? That's okay. If you don't, that's okay also. All right. Don't forget, hand in your labs. As of this morning, labs that were handed in, I've already posted the grades for, and also extra credit. As of about 6 a.m. this morning, I looked. And um, check if, you're, if I'm missing something, let me know by email. And no student should ever lose points because of a mistake I make. And if I did make a mistake, let me know and I will correct it. Uh, don't forget, if you have any last minute questions, I'll have my office hour tonight. All right, let's get to work. Everybody see uh, test two review. Thank you, Megan. And the last part here was right here. And this is an allyl condensation. Remember the alpha carbon, the carbon bonded to the carbonyl carbon has acidic protons. You react that with sodium hydroxide and water. There are other bases too, but for this class, I'll stick to sodium hydroxide and water. You form the enolate anion, it attacks, notice organic chemists are real violent, it attacks the other carbonyl and opens it up to an alcohol, and you make that something very special, very rare, carbon-carbon single bond. And that's all for test two. Uh, one thing, public service announcement from me, your host, 
and that is what's the best way to study for the final? Use your hourly exams as practice problems. Again, best way to study for the final is use your hourly exam as practice problems. Will I put the same problems on? No, they won't be on the final. Will I do similar ones? Of course. If you go back and look at all the practice problems for each chapter, similar problems were on the test for that, those chapters. Let's look at test number three review, which you should see on your screen. First, we talked about, notice I say we, I talked about you listen, but you did practice because you guys are doing, and girls, I shouldn't say you people, that sounds better, are doing really good in my class, thank you. All right, carboxylic acid, carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen, hydrox group and R group. And how do you name it? You find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon, drop the E, add OIC in the word acid. If they're uh, substituents, remember the carbonyl carbon is always number one. Now I asked you to learn two common names. When R is a methyl group, that's acetic acid. Where do you find that? Mix that with water and you have vinegar. When R is a hydrogen, you have formic acid, and that is the acid mixed with water that the fire ants use as a defensive weapon. When R is a benzene ray, IUPAC and their infinite wisdom make the common name, the IUPAC name, benzoic acid. Now, carboxylic acids are carboxylic are acids because they have they donate a proton, definition of a bronsted lorry acid. And if you react it with any base, lithium, sodium, or potassium, you remove that proton and form the carboxylate anion. Now, there was a special base I asked you to know all the products, and that's sodium bicarbonate baking powder. If you take a carboxylic acid, you'll get the carboxylate anion, water, and carbon dioxide, and the arrow shows you up that the CO2 is given off as a gas. And if you remember, I told you a story about the little rocket ships. Oh, it's great memory. Uh, my father taught me, well, first of all, I had the world's awful, most awful candy. You throw that out in a proper receptacle and you have an empty little tube, put some baking powder and AHCO3 and vinegar, slam the cap on, it builds up CO2 the cap goes flying off and it was cool. If your timing was great, it would go about five, six feet. And when you're five, six years old, that's amazing. Don't forget, I taught you about my father's secret recipe for uh, spaghetti sauce by putting sodium bicarbonate in at the end would neutralize some of the citric acid. And also it's not in our course, but you also put a little pinch for like three gallons of salt, a sauce of cinnamon. All right, how do you make a carboxylic acid? You oxidize a primary alcohol. And remember your friend on the final, there are two friends you'll have. One, how many bonds to carbon? Four, four, uh, over the years, grading finals, I'd say about 70% of the answers. If a student had looked, oh, I don't have four bonds to carbon, that can't be right. They would have changed it and got more points. That's most, a good part of the wrong answers are because of that. The other thing you should remember, do you break carbon, carbon single bonds, except for combustion? No, not in this class. And in real life, it's very rare too. All right, another way to make an aldehyde is oxidize a aldehyde, make an aldehyde. <laughs> another way to make a carboxylic acid is oxidize an aldehyde and you replace the H with OH. Now, a cool way, and it is because you use dry ice sometimes, which is cold, cool, 
is take a Grignard, remember X can be chlorine, bromine or iodine, and react it with CO2, second step acid water, and you get a carboxylic acid that's one carbon longer than the Grignard you started with. All right, next we started talking about esters. Esters, you have a carbonyl with an R group, and the carbonyl is an oxygen. And on the oxygen, instead of a hydrogen, you have R prime, more carbons. Now, let me remind you, when you're studying for the final, don't forget to play that fun game, circle and name the functional group, two points each. Go look at test two, go look at test three. Remember, practice circle and name the functional group, two points each. Now, Esther, how do you name it? You name the R prime in front and you name that as the alkyl group it comes from. Next, there are two ways of doing the rest of the molecule. IUPAC rule is name, if R prime was an H, name it as a carboxylic acid to make that ester and drop the IC in the word acid and add ATE. Now, B2 is what one of my students in a long time ago in Chem 170 said, this works and about 95% of the way it does. And that is look at the carbonyl carbon Count how many carbons is in the chain that's connected to, including that carbonyl carbon, name it as an alkane, and then drop the E and add OHEE. And for most of this, this B2 will work, but 2A, when R is a benzene ring, benzoic acid, which means benzoate esters, you have to use that. All right, next, uh, the only common name for an ester was this one, ethyl acetate. That's where R is methyl, R prime is ethyl, and nobody ever calls that ethyl ethanoate. They call it ethyl acetate, the common name. And that's one of the two molecules used for nail polish remover. See, I took it off. No, I, my grandfather used to, back when I was a kid, very young, men used to have clear coat of polish put on their nails. I remember my grandfather used to, I don't think my father did, but you go in any barber shop and they would do that. All right, now, we talked about it earlier, but let's talk about the IUPAC nomenclature. And this is a carboxylate anion or a salt, either one, I like carboxylate anion. And what? how do you name it? Name M plus as the element it comes from in front. If it's sodium Na, you put sodium. If it's Li, lithium, K, potassium. And then use the ester number 2A or 2B, or not to be. That's the question. I can't resist that. Sorry. But anyways, that's how we name it. Now, where do you find esters? Well, whenever you smell a flower, you're smelling an ester. And the smell and taste of many fruits and vegetables are esters. How do you make an ester? Williamson ether synthesis. You take a carboxylic acid, react it with an alcohol, H plus acid catalyst, and you get an ester. The carbon with the hydroxyl group in R prime is a carbon that R prime is bonded to in the ester. Now, if we look at an ester, what can you do with it? Well, acid hydrolysis. Acid and water with an ester, you get back the carboxylic acid and the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. Next, if you take a base saponification of an ester, you get a carboxylate anion plus the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. The carboxylate anion is a carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid because this acid will react with the base immediately to make that carboxylate anion. Next, I start talking about amines and amine derivatives. 
derivatives mean things that are made from a means or anything else in front. And there are three types of means, which I won't ask you ever, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Remember for an amine, nitrogen has three bonds to it. Amine, nitrogen has three bonds to it. If you don't, you put in a hydrogen. Now, I only ask you to learn common names and you name each R group on the nitrogen and then at the end, add the word amine. Now, there's one amine I would like you to know and that's aniline. That's when a benzene ring is attached to NH2. And aniline is responsible to help chemists make all the dyes that like make my top look the color it is. Next, now this is near and dear to my heart because I have a number of US patents and they help pay my mortgage in a couple of cars and that's quaternary ammonium salts. And quaternary ammonium salts are a nitrogen with a plus charge and four alkyl groups since all molecules in nature need a zero net charge, you have an anion. And for this class, I'm only gonna use the halogen anions. How do you name a quaternary ammonium salt? You name each R group as the alkyl group attached to that. And at the end, you add the words ammonium halide. And for halide, one is chloride anion. No, it's chloride. One's Br minus, that's bromide. And one is I minus, that's iodine. Remember, everything I'm showing you is available to you in this case, the lecture folder of D2L. Now, it means our bases, and I'll show you the reaction in a little while, and you have what's known as an amine salt, where you have R, R prime, and R double prime. And please note that R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. And how do you name amine salts? The same way as quaternary ammonium salts. Don't forget, quaternary ammonium salts can be used as fabric softeners and antimicrobial compounds like in my mouthwash that kill bacteria, microbes. How do you make an amine? For primary amine, ammonia plus an alkyl halide in the presence of base, you get a primary amine. Primary amine reacting with an alkyl halide in the presence of base, you get a secondary amine. The nitrogen bonds to the carbon, same thing here, that has the halogen on it. And these three, four cases, X is chlorine, bromine, or iodine. You take a secondary amine, react with an alkyl halide, this attacks that, and you get a tertiary amine. And finally, you take a tertiary amine, react with an alkyl halide, you get a quaternary ammonium salt. And, oh, I can't resist, so I won't. R sub T is a tallow group, 18 carbons with and without a double bond. And it's your turn. What would be the product of that reaction? Did you switch screens? Because we still see the test three review. All right, don't forget to give me a thumbs up when you're done.
Oh, in case you haven't studied for a while. That should help you. All right, well, I think everybody's done. If we look here, we have a tertiary mean. I can call this R and R prime, and this R double prime. And I can call this are triple prime. And the product as seen here is a quaternary ammonium salt. Hey, Dr. White, I think the screen might be frozen. I'm not seeing this way. any work. There's going to be two of these on there. Notice our double prime and triple prime are the same. So I can write it this way. Can you hear us? And if you don't put the charges, I'll never take points off, but I will put the charges. Good habits, Dr. White doesn't change. Now there's another way you could have written it that would be perfectly correct on a test. Two sides have R sub T and they can be like I have it or other ways of writing it. And this is ditalo methyl ammonium chloride, which is for many years, the only molecule used as a fabric softener. Oh no, Joe, you should have told me that earlier. I missed that. So, I apologize. All right. Somebody should have, right, Never mind. All right, everybody see the reaction now? Well, let me give you another one to try. All right, can you see it now? Thank you. The last day of class. I've been pretty good this semester. I don't think I've messed up on Zoom that often. I should shut up because I'll start messing up now. Thank you, Joe. And don't forget, thank you, Megan. If you know anybody anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world who needs a one semester organic, let them know I'll be teaching this again online totally next semester here at ECC. So they should register. In fact, one of your colleagues told me it also happened two colleagues, not your colleagues, two former students last semester, schools they go to that aren't ECC, the way they teach this one semester organic, similar to Chem 170, usually 60 or 70% of the class flunks, which is horrendous, it's sad. And those students, when they take me, are doing much, much better. If I had that many students flunk in my class, I'd say either I've lost it or somehow I was teaching first graders because it should never happen in my class. All right, let's do this. What do we have? A tertiary amine. Well, I can look up right here where 
R, R prime, and R double prime are methyl. And over here, I have an alkyl halide. Remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And this I'll call R triple prime. And one way of writing it, my R, I'll get a quaternary ammonium salt right here. Again, you don't have to put the charges, but I, oops, wrong anion. So use the chloride. And that's how you do it. And this, for your own edification, this iodine is not bonded to that methyl group. It's ionically bonded to the nitrogen. But we put it to the right. This is a standard convention where you write it even though you could write it anywhere around there. All right. Now, a great way of making a amine is a primary amine, react a nitrile carbon nitrogen triple bond, excess hydrogen, a catalyst, catalyst be nickel, platinum, or palladium. And here you have two pi bonds in that triple bond, which you break, when that happens, each atom of the triple bond gets two hydrants, which you can write like this or like this. Now, amines are bases, therefore, I can react this with an acid. And for this class, I'll keep it to the hydrohalogen acids, HCl, HBr, HI, and you donate a proton and make a mean salt. Now remember, R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. Next, I talked about amides. And amides are carbonyl with an R group. And the carbonyl is nitrogen. And nitrogen, you have R prime and R double prime. Now, with amides, R prime and R double prime, one, both, or none can be hydrogen. And remember what you're looking on the screen. And if I'm going a little fast, you can always just say, slow down. Hold on, let me check something. Ah, I forgot to turn on my speaker. All right, somebody turn on their mic and say something. Hello. Oh, it works. Ah. I usually shut it off when I'm not using it. And I forgot to, do you hear it? I can hear you now. Well, it happens once a semester. And I waited until the last day to do it. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed. My top just turned red. <laughs> oh, awful humor I gotta inflict you with. All right, amid, carbonyl, nitrogen, our prime, our double prime can be hydrogen. How do you make an amide? You react the carboxylic acid with either ammonia, primary means, secondary mean. In the way I have it written, our prime and our double prime, both or one or none can be hydrogen and you form an amide. Now, when you react an amide, you use HCl, why that acid? Because that's in your stomach. And this is a general reaction, how you break down protein in your stomach and amide, H cell water, you get back the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide plus the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that amide. Why? Amines are basic. In acid, they form the amine salt. Now, base hydrolysis, you have this case, you get back the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide because the carboxylic acid you get immediately reacts with the base to form the carboxylate anion. But you do get the amine you would have used to make that amide. Now, I talked about heterocyclic compounds, and the only things you need to know there are one, 
what is a heterocyclic compound? That's a ring with carbon atoms and other atoms, such as oxygen or nitrogen. And I only asked you to learn one heterocyclic compound, and that looks like benzene, but one of the carbons has been replaced by nitrogen, and that's called pyridine, which is both the IUPAC and the common name. All right, there'll be about, I don't know, four or six points on the final on the last chapter, which wasn't on test four. And that's, what is an amino acid? And an amino acid, let me write a better way on my whiteboard. An amino acid is a carboxylic acid. And on the alpha carbon, the carbon attached to the carbonyl carbon, you have an NH2 group. You learned about chiral carbons. When you have four different groups, four different atoms, or four different uh, mixture of groups and atoms, that's a chiral carbon. And the alpha carbon, this one, is chiral when our Dr. White, are you writing on your whiteboard right now? Can I do it again? Yeah, we just can't see it. Thank you. This isn't Friday the 13th, is it? Actually, Friday the 13th has been lucky for me a couple of times, so I shouldn't say that. Is it Wednesday the 13th? All right, now can you see it? Thank you, Calvin, for letting me know. All right, now. If you look at it, an amino acid is a carboxylic acid on the alpha carbon, carbon bonded to the carbonyl carbon, you have an NH2 group. And when R is not hydrogen, then amino acids are chiral. Because all you need is one chiral carbon to make a molecule chiral. Not going to ask you anything on Zwitter ions. Now, as you learn, by the way, can you see key reaction of an amino acid on your screen? Thumbs up. Thank you. Keep an eye on me. I already made two mistakes. I'm dangerous today. Not really. If you take a carboxylic acid and react it with an amine, you make an amide. And what's the key functional group? holding amino acids together and proteins, that's an amide bond. And I'm not gonna ask anything about peptides. Protein is 50 amino acids or more held together. And the thing you should know is what type of functional group is in proteins. The key one is an amide, because that's how you hold together the amino acids and protein. And because of that, what happens when you digest, you eat something with a protein in it? Well, you got amide in your stomach, acid and water, and you get acid hydrolysis of an amide, which I hear for a peptide, but same thing for a protein, how it breaks down. All right, leaving my class, and I'm not gonna go through test number four, because Monday I went through uh, the answer key, which I'll assume was like in a review, but you should study that. But from test number four, and I'm not gonna go through it again, you should know
you should know how soap works. And, oh, I'm gonna go through it again. I've got time. You should know soap has a nonpolar tail. and a polar head. Water is polar and dirt is nonpolar. And the most important piece of the puzzle is light dissolves light. And everybody, you can't see my whiteboard, right? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Now, when you have a piece of dirt on your hand or wherever, it's nonpolar. And water says, I want no part of you because the light dissolves light. But the soap having a nonpolar tail is attracted to it. And I'm only gonna do a couple of soap molecules. There are much more and surrounds it. And this forms, and you should know, the micelle. And the micelle The micelle, which the outside is a shell, you only see the polar heads, inside in the middle is the dirt. Micelle now looks polar to water, and because the light dissolves light, water looks at the micelle and says, oh, I'm polar, you're polar, let's go down to drain together, and they do. All right, leaving my class, you should know the following how to describe with words and a general reaction what happens when you eat something with fat or oil in it. And what's the key functional group in a triglyceride, fat or oil, ester. And here, what's how do you describe that? It's acid hydrolysis of an ester. And you should know how to describe what words and the general reaction, ester, in your stomach is acid, and here you can put H plus water, and you get back the, S, the carboxylic acid plus the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. So how do you describe when you eat a fat or oil with words and general reaction? You have acid hydrolysis of an ester, and that's the words, and here's the general reaction, ester, acid, and water, get back the carboxylic acid and the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. Now, if you eat a carbohydrate, a starch, how do you describe when you eat a carbohydrate with words and a general reaction, what happens? Well, it's acid. Hydrolysis. Am I spelling hydrolysis wrong? I think I'm having a bad spelling day. Time out to get help from Google.
No, I was spelling it right. Did I tell you I was always the first one down in the spelling bee? I was. I still would be. All right. I feel better now. And what's the key functional group in holding glucose together and carbohydrates? And that's an acetal. And therefore, it's acid hydrolysis of an acetal. And what's the general reaction? You learned test number two. I assume everybody can see my whiteboard. Got my speaker on and you can yell out. No, we can't, but nobody's yelling out. Good. And when you do acid hydrolysis with an acetal or ketal, you get back to ketone plus the alcohol you would have used to make that acetal. For those who want, you can put a two there. I wouldn't, which is why I make it tiny. <laughs> but I had some students who get a, got upset if I didn't do that. So when you eat a carbohydrate, key functional group acetal, and that's acid hydrolysis and acetal, how you describe what words, and with a general reaction, acetal, ketal, acid and water, you get back the ketone or aldehyde plus the alcohol you would have used to make that acetal. And finally, how do you describe with words and a general reaction, what happens when you eat a protein? And the general, what functional group is the key functional group in a protein. And that's an amide, which other people call the peptide bond. I don't, because I'm a synthetic organic chemist. And in your stomach, there's acid and water. And what's the key functional group? An amide. Next. How do you show that general reaction? And here I will use HCl because I need a counter anion. Have an amide, you get back the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide plus the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that Amid. And you should know, leaving my class, how to describe with words and a general reaction what happens when you eat an amide, and that's acid hydrolysis, or eat an amide, eat a protein, which are amides, but eat a protein. You see, going into a restaurant and say, what kind of amides do you sell here or make here? No. But anyways, acid hydrolysis of an amide is how you describe with words when you eat a protein. And the general reaction is amide, HCl, and water. And you get carboxylic acid and the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that amide. When you eat a carbohydrate, What's the key functional group? Acetal. And how do you describe that with words? Acid hydrolysis of an acetal. And here's the general reaction. Acetal, acid, and water, or ketal. And you get back the aldehyde or ketone plus the alcohol you would have used to make that acetal or ketal. And finally, how do you describe when you eat a, a fat or oil or something with fat or oil in it with words and a general reaction? That's acid hydrolysis of an ester. And the general reaction is ester, acid, and water. You get back the carboxylic acid plus the alcohol you would use to make that ester.
first day of class, I said, my world of organic chemistry is your world of organic chemistry, but you don't know about it. Now I can say our last day of class, my world of organic chemistry is your world of organic chemistry, and you do know about it. You now have information and knowledge that most people in the United States, most people on our planet have no clue about. And that makes you a special individual. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you who are either in my class in person or watching the videos. Thank you for being in my class. I'm done. That said, if you have any questions, uh, come to my office hour tonight. Megan, stick around for a minute or two so I can help you out. Uh, but other than that, I'm done. And I'll say thank you for being in my class. Oh, by the way, if you like, go to ratemyprofessor.com, say something good or maybe something bad about me, or send an email to the Board of Trustees. You really, really liked what I did or didn't really like what I did. And with that, I'm going to say, don't forget, study hard like you need every point on the final, and you'll do good. And thank you. Gang Gazun. Goodbye.